Check, check, live it right. I know say I hides from the rebel farm, yeah. I know say one love, one aim, one destiny. Hiya, I them say more. Is Colombia dangerous? I'm going to begin this video with a follow-up, as a commentary on my last video, Farewell to Ecuador. I lived in Ecuador for three years. And if you want to know the story about why and how I moved there and what I went through, you can go back to over 200 videos ago and you can find that story. But I want to say that I want to say this. In the time I lived in Ecuador, I made a lot of good friends and I had a great life there. So if you're interested in Ecuador, it's certainly a viable option. And I can tell you, I certainly enjoyed it. Now, as the title of this channel, Grand Colombia, what does that mean? Does that mean Colombia? Well, go back and look at the history and you'll see that Grand Colombia was actually a country at one time that encompassed all of this area, Ecuador, Panama, Venezuela, and Colombia. Now I've lived in Ecuador, I did videos on Ecuador. While I was there, I traveled to Colombia uh, half a dozen, I think seven times over the last couple years. And so doing the videos here and there, I thought it didn't make sense just to be Ecuador. I've always wanted to go to Venezuela, and for obvious reasons, I certainly can't go to Venezuela right now, but I hope in the future I can go. So that's three of the four countries. Now, why not Panama? Well, honestly, I don't really have any interest in Panama. It's kind of overrun, it's overcrowded, it's overdone. There's nothing there that I can't find elsewhere. That doesn't mean I won't ever go to Panama. I probably will, just to flesh out this title of the channel. But um, I personally really have no interest about going to Panama and certainly not living there. So I lived in Ecuador, farewell to Cuenca, Ecuador, and now I'm living in Manizales, Colombia. And for the foreseeable future, I will be doing videos about Colombia. So the focus of season six will be my life in Colombia. Now, as I mentioned in, in the, the introduction video, I live in Manizales, but I'm not here to promote Manizales. As a matter of fact, this probably is not the place for you to go. There will be more detail on that as we go along. Um, it's not that I'm trying to discourage Manizales. It's a beautiful place. It's just I'm speaking to my audience. And who are my audience? My audience are North Americans primarily looking to find a place of retirement, primarily looking to find a better way of life, a better cost of living that can be afforded them where they're currently living. A secondary audience for this channel are people in general that are just looking for travel and looking for information and quite a few make their money on the internet. So that's the audience that I speak to. I'm not speaking to Colombians. I'm not speaking to Ecuadorians. My videos never have. And so when I get Ecuadorians or Colombians get on and take exception to things I say, it's because they're not the audience. Uh, one prime example is I did a video in Cali, and my videos are about my opinions. Uh, no one else's, they're my opinions. I happen to think Cali sucks. I don't like Cali. And I did a video when I was there, and I, I named four reasons. Uh, there's actually many, but four reasons why I don't like Cali. But I'll clue you in on something. If it's a big city, I don't like it. It can be the nicest in the world. I just went to Bogota. I had to go to Bogota. And it's an amazing city. I've been there, I think, three times. But it's been many years. It has changed so much. I don't even recognize it. It's a completely different place. So it was the same with Monty's house. I had been here 16 years ago. 
completely didn't recognize it because most of the city or a good portion of the city didn't even exist then. That's the way it was in Bogota. When I'm going through Bogota, I'm feeling like I'm in New York City. I'm, in, I'm on Manhattan Island. It was amazing. And I'll do a video of, of Bogota, probably the next one. So here I am in Colombia, and there's going to be a change in my goal. In Ecuador, as a hobby, I made these videos spurred on by running into a couple people that had gotten bad information, moved to Ecuador, and financially were in a real bind because of the false information. Now, what is this false information? Well, there's a lot of people that are making a ton of money off promoting certain areas for you to move to. They're selling seminars, there's a whole range of things. And I bristled against making money off of what I was doing because I didn't want to be part of what they were doing. But circumstances have changed. I'm not going to be part of what they're doing. Nothing will change about that. But my income has changed. And details don't matter, and it's personal, but I don't have the income that I had before. And so I need to take my hobby and turn it into something that I can live on but more than that, that I can actually expand and grow what this channel does. I want to do a lot more traveling. I want to do a lot more detailed, specific information that you'll be able to search and find what it is you're looking for. I want it to be a place where it's a resource for you. So it's like, I'm thinking about going or visiting to XYZ. Can you go and get me such and such information. Uh, I want to turn it into that, and that's gonna take resources. And so I'm gonna ask you, if you are interested in those things, to please donate. I have a GoFundMe, which you can find the information in, uh, below in the comments. I have a Patreon account, which I've had for a while. Uh, and so I ask you, if you're interested in those services, please contribute. If you're not, you will still receive these videos for free, so you don't have to worry. If, if you don't want to spend a dime, nothing will change for you. But if you want to support what I'm doing, and if you want to get something out of it beyond just watching the current videos, you know, please give me help with that. And I am willing to do certain personal thing. So if you're coming and you want to know about, well, I've asked actually a number of people have asked me about, can you show me around Armenia? Because if you watch these videos, you know that that's probably my favorite place in Colombia. By the way, where does Colombia stand? I've traveled a lot. I haven't mentioned this in a while, but I've been to 20 different countries. I've lived in three countries for an extended period of time outside of the United States. My favorite country on this planet is probably Japan. I've never felt more at home in Japan. There was something about the culture. It really fit me to a T. I love Japan. The language was simple. It's like, it's like math. It's very exact, therefore easy to learn. The language in Japan is pretty much the same as it was 50 years ago, 100 years ago. It's not what I would call a living language like English and Spanish. So you get the rules and you get the pronunciation and that's the way it is. In one year I was fluent. Uh, within about a year, I actually was told time and again that I didn't even have an accent. Now, I've been struggling with Spanish forever. As some of you know, when I lived in Colombia in 2002, I actually married a Colombian girl wonderful person. We were married a little over eight years, and for reasons that weren't really a negative thing, we got divorced, but we're friends. She's one of the best people I've ever known that hasn't changed. But I really got an affinity for Columbia at that time. Being here and traveling around, it was like, oh my God, this is an amazing place. I've been all over Asia. I've been to Europe. I've been other places uh, south of the border. But Colombia was unique, it was special. 
and it, maybe I'll do a video on what that was. So Colombia is my second favorite place on this planet. Of course, I'm excluding the United States and Canada, um, but if you're going to travel to another country, Japan was awesome, Colombia, second favorite. Now, why am I not in Japan? Well, frankly, because I can't afford it. I just can't afford it. I can't live in Japan. Um, I would have to go back to work and um, probably still couldn't afford it. So here I am in Colombia, my second favorite place. I love this place. I absolutely love it. Where does Ecuador rank? Very close, but I love Colombia. I have a relationship with Colombia that goes back a long time. Which brings me to the point of the video. Is Colombia safe? Now, if you ask somebody that hasn't spent any time in Colombia, what's the deal with Colombia? They're going to tell you it's the land of cocaine. It's the land of drug dealers. It's the land of sex pads. There's not much more offensive to people in Colombia than to associate them. Oh, sorry about this late spot. I'll work on that to associate them with Pablo Escobar. I mean, all the Pablo Escobar jokes went sour decades ago. That was a long time ago. The 80s are over. Please understand that. How has Colombia changed? Well, it's changed dramatically when I was here before. And when I was here before, I loved it. On the other hand, it was before I got sick, I was thinner, I was strong, I was fit, and probably due to my background, I was pretty fearless. I didn't care, I wasn't oblivious to danger, I simply did not care. And it was a dangerous place. It was the Wild West. I mean, one time I was in Dos Quebradas, which is near Pereira, and I was shot at. Uh, my my ex-wife, when we were here together, I would be in a taxi and I would have my arm out the window and she would panic. She would grab my arm, pull it back in because she didn't want somebody to grab it. I wore a ring at the time. They were going to take the ring and they were going to rip my arm. She would just, she was always in a panic when she walked out in public, like everybody else, she grabbed her purse and held it like this. People here lived in that kind of fear when they were out and around. It was a fear with my ex-wife that was probably more than most because she had actually been, she was a teacher. And her and a teacher friend got assigned for a period of time out in the country in this little one-room schoolhouse. It was a rotating duty. And so she went out there with this other female friend with a classroom of about a dozen kids and the FARC which is so-called revolutionary, they're really just criminals. They came with AK-47s, held them at gunpoint. She was there for three days, sitting on the classroom floor, not eating. Um, well, I won't get graphic about it, but it was, it was a horrendous time. And so she carried a fear with her that it took several years in the United States to watch that dissolve. It was a dangerous place in those days. On the other hand, one of the things I loved about Colombia is you cannot dominate these people. Where there's other countries where people are more passive. And Ecuador is one of those places. People are more passive. In Colombia, people here are fiercely independent and will not be dominated. And what that meant in those days was you didn't have country laying down for these criminals. They fought these criminals. What it also meant was Colombia, if there's one word to describe Colombia, it's life. Everything is about living your life in Colombia. And in those days when times were at the worst, when unemployment was over 50%, where the economy was in the toilet, more than half of the people in this country were struggling dirt poor, you would be in a community, a barrio, 
where on a whim somebody would come out with playing some music and next thing you know people would be coming out of their apartments and they would get be gathering and they would bring what little they had maybe somebody dropped them a rape but maybe it's arepa the food of the gods here maybe somebody brought some aguardiente which is the booze of choice which you can get a big bottle for 50 cents or something I mean, it's cheap there'd be music they would be dancing salsa is in the blood here dancing and music and food and friends and laughter is what it's all about and to see that juxtaposition of being surrounded by the danger of life and death situations of bombs literally going off in your downtown but watching the sheer joy of people over the simplest of things if that doesn't endear you to a place then maybe you're dead inside it captured me now let's fast forward 16 years here we are today in the present and what do we have we don't have that danger anymore you know despite what you think what you hear uh, people love to jump on all oh, the park they're resurrecting and there's crime and in, in all the street yeah there's crime I mean you've been to Chicago lately the city of Chicago puts to shame what goes on here the city of Chicago puts to shame what goes on in almost the entire of South America so you have to put things in perspective yes there's crime here and there's a resurgence of crime Medellin in particular I will say there is a resurgence of crime in certain areas most of Medellin is still very safe there's part of Medellin where it's coming back and it's dangerous to go there and there's even some bus lines that won't operate there does that mean you don't want to go to Medellin well no it doesn't because most big cities have places you don't want to go regardless of where it is I mean tell me that you would go anywhere around Los Angeles or San Francisco no of course you would unless you want to have your head examined for some mental illness there's dangerous places in big cities what's drawn attention is that there hasn't been danger and now there is a resurgence it still doesn't reach the level of most other places there's also the concern of the drug dealers on the border but you need to understand what that actually means first of all the drug dealers are out of Mexico of course there are Bolivians with them there are Ecuadorians with them there are Colombians with them but it's no longer a Colombian franchise it's a Mexican franchise and Ecuador is every bit as much a part of that as Colombia and Bolivia so that's pretty much what we have going on there now on this border it's in Colombia for the most part there's nothing there there's little towns yeah but there's nothing there it's a jungled not very populated area it does spill over into some of the other towns but Colombia has invested heavily in police and military for these very things now is there a danger of this yeah there is but there's hope this new president Duque is a hardliner now for some people that strikes fear in your heart but it shouldn't strike fear because you have historical precedent when was the last hardliner in Colombia? It was a president named Uribe who came into office in 2000, I believe. He was extremely popular. And he was popular because of what he did. As I told you, it was a wild west. It was very dangerous. Well, shortly after my time here, 2002, I believe it was in 2003, maybe four, somewhere in there, he basically got sick of Medellin being a captive city now let me tell you what Medellin was like at the time in those days 
you could not leave your neighborhood without paying a toll. The city was in control by criminals and had all these little sub-criminal places, pretty much like Caracas in Venezuela right now. You had all these sub-criminals that would band together, 15, 20 of them, and they would control their neighborhood. And you had to pay a toll. After 6 o'clock, you didn't go out at night. You were prisoners in your house. It was ridiculous. And Medellin is a big city with millions of people, and this is how they lived under they lived under the boot of these criminals. And Uribe said, enough of this. And he went in with the military in full force. Helicopters repelling down soldiers. They went house to house, block to block, killing or capturing these criminals. It freed Medellin. And it didn't take long. It was a matter of a few months, and it was free. You would have thought it was liberation of Paris after in World War II. That's what it was like. People came out of their houses, and they could breathe again. It was an amazing thing. That's what that hardliner did. He didn't do anything negative. He did something positive. Sometimes it takes a force to stop an evil. And we have a new president here, his name is Duque, who is actually supported by Uribe, who is of the same mold, the kind of person who is fiercely patriotic for Colombia, for the people of Colombia, and he won't let this stand. So I have a lot of faith at this point that he will do what his predecessor did. He will clean up this growing problem. Now, having spoke about that problem, I don't want to give you the wrong idea. These are isolated things, and they're in particular areas. There is no longer the kidnappings and shootings and bombings and things that existed 15 years ago and, and farther back. This country was torn apart by this over the course of 30 or 40 years. They don't want to go back to it. That's why this new president was elected. In a place like Armenia, for example, you can go out and walk day or night and feel safe. In Manizales, it's very safe. There's probably some neighborhoods you don't want to go into. There's poor everywhere. There's poor in Ecuador. There's places in Ecuador you don't want to go. There's a whole section of Guayaquil, Quito. You don't want to go to those places. In Cuenca, which is considered to be all so safe, and it's relatively safe, but there's places you don't want to go. And you're gonna have that everywhere, but on the whole, is Armenia, for example, as safe as Cuenca? Possibly safer, because it's maybe less of a target. So, but it's certainly equally as safe. If you feel comfortable walking around in Cuenca, you will feel at least that in Armenia in Manizales. Now, as the city gets bigger and bigger, you have more concern. So if you go to Medellin, which is the ultimate destination, if, if you're looking for a place in Colombia and you're a gringo, but you need to understand that there's going to be parts of that city you don't want to go to, but you can be heartened by the fact that you have a national government that is working very hard to even solve those problems. They're not going to go back. This is a first world modern country and economy. And they don't want to slide back to the bombings and shootings and kidnappings of yesteryear. So, is Colombia dangerous? If you use common sense and if you go to most of the country, by far most of the country, it's going to be safe. You're going to be surprised. you got to quit watching narcos and thinking that's the way Colombia is today, because it is not. That's the way it was. Of course, it's still fictionalized and sensationalized, but it was bad. I can tell you firsthand. I mean, I was never shot at in Cuenca. Um, I didn't have an ex-wife who was kidnapped in Cuenca. But Colombia 
is a wonderful place. It's very safe. And although no one is paying me to say this, um, I love this place. That won't change the fact that I'm going to tell you things that are crap about it. Because, hey, there's crap about it everywhere. And so you won't find me painting some glowing, bogus picture about a place. I'll tell you why I love it, but I'll tell you the things that suck about it. So you're going to get that. And I want to thank you for hanging in there. Uh, you're still growing subscribers, but if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, definitely keep putting the comments there. I love getting those comments, suggestions. And yes, I know the sound sucked on two videos ago. I'm completely aware of it. Hopefully, this one will be much better. So until the next time, when hopefully I get my new Colombian hat.